taking a bit of a turn into the world of simulation. And um, I'm about to introduce David Haddon, CEO of Therison, which uses an artificial intelligence engine to uh, take a lot of data in pharmacology databases and uh, best practices guidelines. And he's built an application that is used for training doctors and nurses and other healthcare workers. It's kind of like a flight simulator for medicine. Um, and Therison provides this browser-based training simulation and predictive analytics to improve care with the goal of improving care and reducing error. So, David. Thank you, Andrew. <clears throat> when uh, Matthew and Andrew invited me to do this, they told me I'd have three and a half minutes, which I thought was a little tight, really. But then I remembered the last time I was on the doctor, she gave me four minutes. <laughs> so I should be able to pull this off. So here's our, here's our patient. I'm going to pretend that I'm the doctor here and treat this guy in this consequence-free simulated environment. But as I go through this, the AI is going to fill out this scorecard, which is based on measures like CMS and vehicle measures, which helps us with kind of the evolving middle landscape of ACO accountability. So let's go and meet our patient. Um, so he's a hypertension patient. I can ask him questions. You know, we're trying to simulate the full kind of way of choices that a doctor might have in this situation. So I'm going to ask him if he's experienced any dizziness. Well, I have had some dizziness and lightheadedness. I have fainted a couple of times. In fact, I saw up my arm and a couple of ribs. You know, I can review those images, I can light boxes, x-rays. He also has an echocardiogram in here, which incidentally has a diagnosis from the radiologist, but the image guy, but you got to be able to, you know, catch that. And uh, I'm going to ask him to be all important, are you on any medication question? No, I'm not taking any medications as such. Well, I, I am using some over-the-counter painkillers for some body aches. Now, this is an acute care situation. I can start a fleet monitor, and uh, so I'm just going to browse through here and we'll look at his history, and we can model this, you know, kind of EMR summary to look like other notable EMRs. You can order tests. Uh, you can order a fundoscopy. I can order uh, a chem screen. And as I do this, the AI is telling me if it likes these choices, you know, so I see that his glucose is a little high, maybe he's diabetic. And I can catheterize him, but doesn't like that. That's kind of international. He just screwed up, you know symbol there, uh, because there's really no evidence to suggest this guy needs to be catheterized, right? I can make diagnoses, and when I do that, it's like, I think he might be diabetic because of high glucose, so I'm going to give him a diabetes, and it says, well, which of the 14 kinds of diabetes do you want? So this isn't a multiple choice test, and that's what makes the data predictive, is that there's literally thousands and thousands of potential choices that the clinicians make. So now the AI is coming back and telling me that that's actually a questionable diagnosis because it, was a, it wasn't the uh, fasting plus the glucose. So let's go over orders and think about how we're going to treat him. First, we have to decide if we want to continue that over the counter painkiller he mentioned. It turns out it's a lead, which is the proxy sodium. And uh, that actually creates a problem because um, it, it, is, it interacts with an undiagnosed condition, which in this case is his hypertension. I can drill down and get more information about that, what's the likelihood of that happening, etc. And uh, so let's go ahead and treat him. And I'm going to put him on uh, potassium. Chuckles of some of the doctors in the audience there. So we have a full pharmacokinetic database in here. The AI understands drugs, how to use them, when to use them. Um, you know, I personally believe that a little bit is good, more is better. So I'm going to go ahead and give it lots. Um, and we'll just see what happens. So if I end this session, you know, we're always capturing feedback from the users as we go along and we learn things from them, you know, and sometimes we, we give them information, you know, sort of towards the end so they can decide if they want to go back and change their, their decisions based on the evidence they've seen. That's really where the learning really happens. So at the end, I see which measures I've won, which ones I've lost, and I get a full, complete analysis from the AI. And then we roll all this data up, you know, into dashboards you know, to show actual, you know, predictive measures. So in this case, scroll around here, last thing I'll show you. Is, so this is an actual program of nurse practitioners for MRSA, and we're tracking, you know, where are they strong, where are they weak, where are they need improvement. Thank you so much, David. Actually, it's just a you know clinic. It's actually how the technology started as a clinical decision support tool. Mm -hmm. We 
just don't think that the market's quite ready for that. There's liability issues. There's, you know, we're starting to see, you know, where it's warming up to the idea of having something like this for actual decision support. Thank you so much. Um, so just in conclusion, if you would humor me with 15 seconds each, if you were doing this panel a year from now, how 